Hello everybody, and welcome to my review for Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. I got some picks with this movie, I got some things I really liked, and I got some things I really hated. There are some spoilers, so I'll wait till the end. Uh, this is actually a PowerPoint presentation, um, I'm going a bit above what I did for underwater and where I have the slides set in a particular order so I can talk about them in a particular order. So don't worry, there will be a rating before I get into spoilers. So do not worry, I have it all set up. You'll know the exact point and I'll mention it. And you can click out of this video and end up spoiler free. So, one. This movie is mainly a Harley Quinn movie. It's not really even a Birds of Prey setup. Because the... Because I'll talk about it a little bit later. But it really isn't a Birds of Prey setup. This movie really should have just been called... The Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. It probably would be fine. But I think they like the title Birds of Prey and the Emancipation... The, the, and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. It just sounds so ex extravagant, and they like that. There we go. Now, this is one of the things. This is the first title card that appears in the movie. Sorry if it's not the best. It's also in the trailer. I believe this appears in the movie the way like this. This is in the trailer, and at some point through this movie, if I talk too long, I'm going to splice in bits of the trailer so that you can watch it, but I'll link to the actual trailer so you can go. I think I'll start doing that now. I liked what I did last time with it. I did not like the end, the opening credit section with the art style. It was kind of creepy, and I really did not like, not this, I like this one. I did not like what they did with the final title card of the movie for Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. It was really too artsy, and none of the movie was really like that, per se, in the style of those credits. And personally, I just kind of feel like they should not have done that. They should have just stuck with the title card the way it was, and it would have been fine. The music was pretty good, though. And, by the way, uh, the Birds of Prey logo there, I added those to both the previous images. Not this one, but I added to that one and this one. Um, I hate this image. I hate it so much. Because I know she's kind of cuckoo crazy, but no one has wings in the movie. <laughs> so they, they did this whole editing thing for no reason and just added wings on. I guess birds of prey. I guess it's the birds aspect. I don't like that. I like the mind over mayhem thing, though. I like that for sure. Um, I just don't like the rest of this. It's very, very unrelated to what the movie was really in in total. Now, this movie is centered around Harley Quinn. Uh, and this is an art, artsy drawing of her. I know it's not directly taken out of the movie. But, um, I gotta say, Margot Robbie, as I on. Margot Robbie, probably the best part of this film. Ewan McGregor was pretty good. I enjoyed him. But I gotta say, he's kinda, she's kinda like the best part of this film. And it really is her movie. It's 90% her, 10% everything else. So, it really, she really does steal, um, excuse me, steal the, the show light. Now, this is a kind of a big deal to me. If you're gonna title a movie Birds of Prey, I mean, <laughs> the movie needs to be more centered around the birds of prey. Because I can tell you, Harley Quinn ain't no birds of prey. And for spoilers, if I can remember, as a yawn, I will tell you why she is not a birds of prey, or at least not in the sense of this movie. But they do not get together to fight. And this isn't a spoiler, because I'm not putting it under context. This is actually one of the scenes, though. They don't get together and fight until, like, towards probably the last act of the film, and even then, probably towards the end of the last act of the film. And it's Birds of Prey. It's supposed to be their setup movie. Where are they? Hmm? My point. Oh, this scene was fantastic. Uh, she goes into a police station with 
the little thing attached there. And she is shooting cops in the face with it. And it's freaking hilarious. And I love it. Now, this movie is kind of, kind of gory. Uh, and this comes with one of my first problems about people's first reactions, like the people who first went and saw the movie, and I have some bits and pieces about it, and about some reviews I saw online and some things. Um, and I saw a video that was a compilation of people's reviews and such like that. Um, Ewan McGregor is kind of just crazy, and I'll get more into his character It. That is more going to be talked about in the spoiler section, but Hugh McGregor plays uh, Cyanus slash Black Mask, and the guy in the back there is a mysterious character that, if you do not know who he is, I will name him uh, later on during the spoiler territory. Not because I don't want to name him now, but because it, I mean, and it doesn't matter who his name is, it doesn't involve spoilers, really. His name's mentioned toward the beginning of the film anyway, or at least two-fourths of the way through the film. It's about halfway through the film. Um, it's just that I want to particularly wait to talk about that character for a little bit later. Now, anyway. Um, he is kind of crazy. Uh, one of the goriest parts of the film is one of his henchmen, I think, cuts around this guy's face. Now, you don't see it up close. I think they do a shot from behind the head, and then they do a faraway shot where if you look closely, you can see uh, the guy's face. But they peel off, they cut off his, like, face, like a mask. And it's decently gory, I would say, not super. And there's a lot of breaking knees and breaking stuff. I wouldn't say there's a super amount of blood. But it is decently gory. Now, my first problem lies in people com comparison. There's a lot of people comparing this movie to Deadpool, at least from the reviews I read. And the reviews of the people who first saw this movie are saying it's better, it's more interesting than Deadpool, and it connects to the DCEU. That's what makes it better than Deadpool. I have facts, and these facts stand for themselves as how this movie is definitely not better than Deadpool. One, if Deadpool did not exist, this movie would not exist. And that is a true fact. Two, Deadpool is way gorier than this movie. This movie was rated R. Deadpool was on the cusp of going above R when it was released. That's one thing. That's the second thing, actually. This Deadpool had a lot more gore than this movie has. But this movie is entertaining. Don't get me wrong. I highly enjoyed it. But still, it is not better than Deadpool. Is it cool to see girls kicking butt? Yeah, I think that's cool. But personally, I don't see what the fuss is all about. There are plenty of movies with amazing actresses kicking butt all the time. And in leading roles, at least from movies I've watched. And not just recently. And I'm just kind of getting tired. Like, this movie, I don't think it counts. Because I, they did a good job with it. It was just entertaining, and they didn't push too hard. They let the movie speak for itself. And I respect that. I highly respect that. But I'm just kind of tired in the movie industry nowadays pushing ideas on people. I want to go to a movie. You tell me a story. You include whatever you want in that story. Don't push ideas on somebody. But the story tell the ideas and let the audience wrap around the ideas and then from there form a complete thought based on what you gave them. Don't push it. Don't force it in their face because then they're not going to want to watch the movie half the time. Unless you're someone that likes getting things pushed in their face. Um, now... My third thing, DCEU. I do not feel like this is anywhere near important to the DCEU. The only thing, and it's mentioned in the first couple minutes of the movie and in the trailer, so I'm going to talk about it. I do not count this as a spoiler. 
Joker and Harley Quinn are broke up at the beginning of this movie. Joker's not in it. There's a flashback to Suicide Squad, that's, but that's about it. Joker and I broke up. Um, they don't ever show Joker's face. And I think that's on purpose because they probably haven't casted the next Joker yet, and I don't think it's going to be Jared Leto, to be honest. But I don't think this movie will have any impact on the DCEU at all. This is really a Harley Quinn solo movie that they threw out as entertainment. And have as little possible effect on the DCEU as possible. Now, I will at some point be going to the budget, and I'll do that before I do halfway through. This is I'm recording this at uh, 2 9 20 20 at 4 15 in the morning. I know. Early. My point being, we're about done with the first weekend of um, Birds of Prey and the. Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. And I can tell you right now, the box office results are very, very low compared to their budget. Now, I believe in the credits, Margaret Robbie is a producer, so I have a feeling that she probably put in a lot of money into this film herself to get it made. Because... Excuse me. Uh, because it only makes sense. Um, I went back one. She's the main actress, so it'd be easier for her to fund it. They don't have to pay her as much, or she's just kind of paying herself. As a matter of fact, in a weird way, she could technically just be paying herself, since she's the main actress, or Warner Brothers is, is the portion that she's getting money from. I don't know. Point being, it's pretty high budget for this type of film but this is also not a huge film I don't care that DC made it, it does not make it huge just because DC made the film it's it's the way you go about it and the character because see I don't I count this as a Harley Quinn movie but at the same time I don't because DC isn't stating it is a Harley Quinn movie if you're going to make a Harley Quinn movie, name it Harley Quinn. Something related to Harley Quinn. Not Birds of Prey and the fantab fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. Because I make it sound like Harley Quinn? Nah, she's not important. She is a side character. And we're going to leave her as a side character. So. Continuing. Um... Oh, there were some other things. Oh, the one of the reviews I saw there uh, on the other showing of that video I told you about earlier was the MCU is dead. And that is a very big, bold statement to say for this movie. I can guarantee you the MCU is not going to be dead over this movie. And that person either just had a really good time or really overestimated this movie. Now, did I enjoy watching it? Yes, I did. I cannot lie. I enjoyed watching it. But is this going to win an Oscar? Is this going to be recognized 10 years down the line for something big? No, it will not. Unless next weekend decides to pick up drastically and make back its budget tenfold, I highly, highly doubt that it will do any sort of memorable thing in the future. It was, I mean, I enjoyed Suicide Squad personally, and it was a fun movie, don't get me wrong. But not that much, not like Deadpool. It was trying to be the DC Deadpool, in a way. And, I mean, there's even portions towards the end, which is not spoiler, where she breaks the fourth wall. She actually looks at the camera once. And that kind of got me upset. Because she is kind of crazy. Understandably. Not as much as Deadpool. And I feel like the character was portrayed well. But they're kind of ripping off Deadpool. And that's not okay in my book. Because 
these companies do this all the time. And they took techniques that they used in Deadpool and kind of threw them into this movie a little bit. That's one of them. I mean, yeah, breaking the fourth wall, but... I mean, she's talking to the characters throughout the movie like a narrator. Personally, I don't count that as breaking the fourth wall because it's not in the movie talking to the audience. It's when you look at the audience and you interact with the audience and you're talking to the audience from the screen, not just a narration, personally. Um, there's something else. Oh, the story. This movie, the basic overall story is... Um, Sionis wants a diamond for some reason. Can't say what. Won't say what. Um, girl. This girl right here next to my mouse, the one in the red right there. Girl. Thief. She's a thief. And then she swallows the diamond. And Margot Robbie, Harley Quinn, and basically the Birds of Prey end up trying to defend her. And not have her get cut open by Cyanus. And that, that's basically it. That's the overall story. To me, that sounds a lot like something else. A lot in the simple aspect. And to be fair, it's a very simple plot. But it sounds a lot like another movie. And that movie would be Deadpool 2. In Deadpool 2, Deadpool and every other one of his members, including um, basically some of the X-Men, the less popular ones. Um, and uh, the taxi driver and a couple of other people help protect this little boy from being killed by the supposed bad guy, which ends up not being the, the bad guy in the end. But um, they protect this kid from getting killed because someone wants to kill him to stop something from happening in the future, but Deadpool says there's another way. There are different stories, but it's about overall, uh, each protects a kid. Then you add the fourth wall breaking onto it. And this movie really does is does and is trying to be a DC Deadpool film. And maybe that's why I enjoyed it. I mean, this commentary right now is not going to affect my rating at all. It is annoying, but it's not going to affect my rating. So, that's just a statement I wanted to mention. So, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Um, my next complaint is the hyena. Cutest damn animal I have seen in a little while. Freaking adorable. Loved it. I personally think, to me, it doesn't look really CGI. I could imagine them having a real hyena, and some people were, I talked to were like, why would they use a real hyena? It's a hyena. But they can train any animal. That or there was an animal there and they CGI'd the hyena over it. I mean, I could see a dog being there. And then they just CGI'd some things to make it more look like a hyena. So, personally, kind of upset because I'm going to tell you now, if you're going into this movie thinking that the hyena is going to have a big role, you will be sadly disappointed. If you think the hyena is going to fight anybody, you're going to be sadly disappointed. And some somewhere along the line here, the trailer has already played. And this is where another gripe of mine is. They use a scene, unless I completely missed it when I watch it, I will have to watch it again. Um, and it won't really change the rating. This is just a, a little bit of an annoyance. There's a scene that I absolutely loved, loved, loved in the trailer where Harley Quinn takes her head and she goes, boom, and hits her head towards the screen. I love that shot. It's nowhere in the movie. Yeah, they use it in quite a few trailers. Even teaser trailers on YouTube I've seen recently. But it's not in the movie. And that pisses me off. Because it was a great shot. And don't show me that shot unless you're going to 
show me that shot in the final product. But that and the hyena not having enough screen time and not being of much use. If it really was all CGI, Harley Quinn, uh, best best actress because she has to take a Twix or not Twix a Twizzler and eat between her and imaginary person. So I have a feeling if it wasn't a hyena, it was like a trained dog or something, and then they CGI changed stuff. Um. But that is annoying. That does kind of affect the thing a little bit because I, the hyena looked really cute before, and I was expecting to have some very cool scenes going all up bloody gore um, with the hyena killing people. But the hyena didn't. The hyena just kind of sat around and then disappeared for half the movie at least. Or at least a fourth of the movie, if not two fourths, I'd say. And Hyena wasn't in the first fourth, so it was probably in one fourth, disappeared for like one more fourth, and then reappeared at the like very, very, very end. So, I have my picks and, and gripes about this movie, and I'm going to get really in-depth into the spoiler territory soon, but my rating is a C+. And this is including everything. For entertainment value, I'd give it a B plus. I was very highly entertained. An A minus, an A minus for entertainment value. There's just some things that I like the hyena, but again, not enough on that entertainment value for me. Could have done so much more with the hyena. Um, but a C plus, yeah. That is my overall grade for this movie. It wasn't terrible. But it's also not doing... It's not doing good, either. Sorry. It's zooming in a little bit, but I'm going to go here. So this is Box Office Mojo by MDB Pro. And this is Birds of Prey. Now, this is its budget. Worldwide, it has not even made half. This needs to be about... Is it a thousand? Million? Million. Million, I think. Yeah, m million. I'm gonna say million. My brain is having it's just almost five in the morning. I'm gonna say million. Um, it is. It needs to make at least ten more million dollars for it to even be near the halfway part. So currently, opening weekend of Birds of Prey is a gigantic, gigantic flop, and that is to me. That is a pretty high budget. I mean, let me look at Deadpool. Let me see what Deadpool's budget was in comparison. The original one. Deadpool's budget was even less. Was even less. And it was about the same length. Literally, I think, actually, one minute shorter. One minute shorter than Birds of Prey. <laughs> One minute shorter, less budget, and it it literally blew blew everything out of the water. Everything. Like what the heck? It was a very big movie, and it was the first like rated R superhero film. I mean, if we look at if we look at um, Deadpool two, it made about the same, but it also had more than even um, Birds of Prey had. So Deadpool two is in a bit of a different category. They gave it a lot more money than they did before because it did so well, and I have to say they still made bank on this movie. Deadpool two still brought in a lot of money, <laughs> a lot, like. Domest international did better than domestic in total, but combined, that's what really matters for them, and they blew it out of the water compared to this. Even domestically, they had about a $2 million difference alone, and just domestically. $2 million, Yeah, around $2 million. $200 million, I'd say. 
I'm bad with numbers, and it's really late. I don't know why I'm still conscious right now. Um, so this movie, it's a big flop, and that had more than Deadpool. Highly doubt they're going to do another uh, Harley Quinn movie all by herself, because or it didn't do that well. And I know it's not done, but I can guarantee you it's February. Sonic's coming out next week. Personally, let me let me let me look at Sonic. We don't know we don't know their budget yet. And this is actually shorter. This is about ten minutes shorter than Birds of Prey. So it's actually it's pretty short. It's really not that long. Um, I don't know what the budget's going to be, but personally, I think Sonic's going to do better than Birds of Prey for several reasons, um, mainly because the hype around it has been growing ever since the second trailer came out, and I think that's kind of what they were hoping on. Excuse me, I'm not going to lie, I kind of feel like that's what they were going for. Um, and on top of that, it's a kid's movie, and I think... That week's like the winter break week for most schools. Even if it's only a couple of days, it'll be a couple more days that people can be in the theater watching Sonic over Birds of Prey. And I just don't think that Birds of Prey is, is going to do that well beyond this point. It's not even doing that well. It's going to be a major flop. To be fair, though, my, my pick of January underwater was a pretty big flop as well. Oh no, it it didn't. It made its money back. It, it no, it it is not a flop. It is nowhere near a flop. It it made past its. Oh, wait, that's not that's not its budget, huh? Wait, does that mean that was I looking at the wrong number? Then No, that's budget. Did I look at Deadpool's right number? I wanna make sure I got this right. That's domestic opening. Oh no, no, there's a budget. There's a budget. No, that's okay. that's right. Okay. I don't know. Really underwater doesn't say it's budget. Domestic opening. Um. So 65 million. Right. Okay. It it was a flop. At least it made half though. If not just over half. <laughs> See, Birds of Prey, to be fair though, hasn't been out long enough. Give it another week. It'll probably be over halfway, more than Underwater was. It's DC. People are going to go see it. And most people are enjoying it. I also want to point out um, Rotten Tomato scores for Underwater, first off, not that good. But if we look, the average rating is also not that good. But if we go to Birds of Prey, the audience reviews and critic reviews are pretty high up. But if we go in here and look at the average, the average isn't that good. I mean, compare comparatively. The total count and the average rating equal that. That's just how Rotten Tomatoes work. A lot of people just think this movie's okay. A lot of critics just think the movie's okay. Okay. The movie kind of just... It's just kind of going on. It's it's okay. Sean the Sheep movie. What the heck? Okay. Sorry. I didn't hear that. So, to be honest, 
Rotten Tomatoes here, this is not that good. It's just because there's a lot of... There's 253 reviewers, and they all have a similar rating that got it up to its 81%. And it'll count as apparently certified fresh, which... Um, one documentary, which I think is actually higher than that. Thank you for playing here. Actually, it's at a 90%, but it's not certified fresh. To be fair, though, I, I guess there has to be maybe a certain number of reviewers to count, but I guess 10, 10 people counting here is less than that. It just might not be fresh. Maybe that's why. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, no. That's the domestic opening the first weekend, which, I mean, that's still a pretty high number, but we can't... But compared to its budget, it did not make back um, anything near what it was. Now, to be fair, though, they made it halfway. DVD sales, Blu-ray sales, they're the other half. Uh, I don't think this... I'm going to be honest. I don't think Underwater is getting a 4K release. Just simply because the movie did not make enough money, so they're not going to put more money into it, and people won't buy it. So I have a feeling that this movie is going to get Blu-ray Max... That's the treatment it'll get, is Blu-ray, and then they'll move on from it. Um, but I'm going to definitely get that and support them for that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go back to Birds of Prey, though. So I'm just saying, currently, the movie is not doing too well um, in the box office compared to its budget, and I highly doubt it will reach back its budget at all. Um... Yeah, I don't think it's going to reach back its budget. But to be fair as well, apparently, internationally, it is already released. But down here, it doesn't say that. But anyway, um, we're going to go ahead. Hold on, give me a second. There we go. I'm back. Because I'm just doing a screen record, so I had to change. I have two different display capture set up for this on OBS. Uh, but anyway, it's a C+. So now, from here on forth, we are going to get into the spoiler territory. Thank you so much for watching. If you stop here, I appreciate you taking the half hour to watch. Otherwise, we're going to quickly go through, because I took a lot of time on everything else, we're going to quickly go through the spoiler heavy section of this review. So let's get into it right now. Oh, hold on. Right now. So, we are here. The character on the left is Roman Cyanus, or Black Mask, whichever one you prefer. The one on the right, which I decided not to name, is Zaz. Now, if you've seen the TV show Gotham, Zaz is a pretty big part of that TV show. Why I'm so upset at this movie are because these two characters do not get nearly the treatment they deserve. They're not big characters, but DC literally throws them in this movie. Brum and Sionis does not wear the mask but once towards the end of the film. And if we even want to see these guys in another movie and give them any sort of treatment... Any sort of treatment to having them have their own movie and not be undershadowed by Harley Quinn, it'd have to be a prequel. Because if this is part of the DCEU, Roman Sionis got blew up into pieces and Zaz is dead. Rachel Ghoul could bring Zaz back if Rachel Ghoul was added into the movie universe. But Roman Sionis does not have an intact body, so Rachel Ghoul could not bring him back. And I'm not saying the characters need a big on screen adaptation, but Zaz is a very interesting character. If you don't know Zaz, basically he's kind of a hitman in a way, in a way, a weird way. Basically, every time he kills someone, he, as you can see, has scars on his face and you can kind of see on his chest, he. He makes a scar for every person he has killed. And he has one all over his body for every single person he's killed. It makes him an interesting character. Very crazy character. But to be fair, most of the Batman villains are crazy. 
I would like to see a movie centered around both of these characters more center stage. Black Mask as well, kind of needing to wear his mask. Now we're back to this one again. I posted it in here again by accident. But what I wanted to talk about is his mask. This scene right here, I don't think needed the mask. And I, I, I agree on their decision not to have it. Now, I could see the scene having it, but in the way Harley knows Cyanus, not Black Mask. So this scene makes sense. But there's a scene earlier where I told talked to you about cutting off the face. Those people may have known, those people did know Roman Cyanus though. The person that got his face cut off. But at the same time, I would have wanted to see him wear the mask one more time. Because that's iconic for Black Mask. And they only had him wear it once. Also, his mask is very plasticky. It looks very plasticky. It looks like it was... It's like Mark I plasticky. They knew they weren't going to use it much, so they just got a very plasticky mask for Ewan McGregor to put on. And, like, I mean, it would have been really cool... Uh, someone I talked to even suggested this. It'd be really cool if, like, he had fell in some acid or something and the mask had fused to his face. That was gonna, That would have been amazing. But no, they just blow him up. Yeah. Personally, I'm upset at those decisions. Because this this shot right here, I love this shot. I love the way the mask looks. As, as plasticky as it is, I like the way it looks. It could be cool to have even him in movies just be a background character and appear every once in a while. Crime Boss. Now, someone also mentioned an idea. Someone else I talked to mentioned an idea that what if Black Mask isn't Roman Sionis in this universe, what if Black Mask is just a type? So the crime boss is called Black Mask. I'd be fine with that. And that way Black Mask technically can come back and Zaz can be brought back from the dead in the future. And everything is okay. And that's okay. Although I kind of wish I saw Ewan McGregor more in the mask than what we got. We didn't see it much. It was mostly to the end and maybe one shot earlier in the film. That was it. Again, I feel Zaz and Black Mask get heavily overlooked in this film, and I'm not happy about it. That was really my biggest spoiler pet peeve. Um, I can't remember what else I was talking, I was going to talk about. Um, oh, why this is not Birds of Prey. Harley Quinn... Toward the end of the film, I need to get to this one. Toward the end of the film, after here, her and the little kid there run off. After they're eating dinner one time, she has to go to the restroom, and then she calls Harley, and they both run off and run away from them after everyone's happy and everything. And it's left with the girl on the right, the two on the left, and that's about it. And they start what they call themselves the Birds of Prey. And Harley Quinn says that she made this little girl her apprentice. I kind of have a feeling if Deadpool 3 does come out, which I know they're hopefully going to do it, so I'm just saying, I think that little kid is still going to be a part of it, because it was a very big deal in Deadpool 2. So I have a feeling that kid will at least still be around, maybe not be an apprentice, but will still be around. So I think the apprentice thing is a plus for Birds of Prey. Unique idea. I'd say. I'll give it credit for that. But I'm just saying... Don't make this movie and then have them split up really instantaneously. It was really fast, too. Which, I I mean, to be fair, Harley Quinn is a character who is just that kind of way. She'll just change her mind pretty much immediately and go do it. She doesn't she doesn't think. And that's fine. Um, but that, that's why she's not the Birds of Prey, because she leaves. But either way, that, I think... We'll wrap up my video on Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. Is this worth seeing in theaters? I would say yes. Uh, I would say it's definitely worth seeing in theaters. 
because it's entertaining. Now, again, I have my picks. I have my gripes. I wish some things were different. I wish people wouldn't relate it as heavily to Deadpool. Because, yeah, no, this movie not blown out of the park like Deadpool did. Just no. But, anyway. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, give Birds of Prey a, a look-see if you're interested. Um, it's a fun movie. Very entertaining. That's why I gave it an A- minus for entertainment and a C plus for story. Story and everything else, I guess. Some people said the cinematography was good. I can see that. But not compared to some other things we've had come out, like 1917 and a couple of other movies. It does not compare. But anyway, again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye!